Hello everyone, welcome to morning coffee, or maybe this is afternoon coffee, or afternoon tea, or whatever. Whenever this reading hits you at whatever moment in your day, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, September 9th, 2019. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, that time is an illusion and energies are fluid, so just because this is dated for the 9th of September, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on the 9th of September. Whenever you catch this reading and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Also, please keep in mind that these are not specific to anything. This is not specific to love, sign, career, uh, status, what, whatever. It's not specific to anything. This is literally just what spirit wants to discuss with us at this moment in time. You can think of this as just your daily, daily conversation with spirit. Yes? Okay, guys. Um, I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Um, the energies, I'm gonna, you know what? It's been, last week was a period of really rough energies. And that's been across the board, I'm, I'm finding. Um, many, many, many of us have been dealing with some really rough stuff lately. Which, uh, in my opinion, or in my case, I'll speak for myself here, it is absolutely necessary. Um, I've come to the understanding of why... I'm personally going through the things that I'm going through right now. Um, I mean, a, enough of an understanding consciously to be like, to, to, to allow myself to really settle into it and to not really beat myself to, up too much about what's going on. Um, there's just, I mean, this is, we've been talking about purging for ever, right? But this, at least in my opinion, from my point of view, what's happening in my life, this is a deep excavation, <laughs> a really, really deep excavation. And it even looks like that's the case here in our pre-shuffle. Um, but I hope you guys had a great weekend. I did, I was able to do the Connecting with your Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine readings. Many of you have seen those already. If you have not, please go ahead and check them out. I did release them this Saturday. It was the first of this series. I really enjoyed doing it, um, and I really look forward to doing more of those. My plan in getting back to what we can consider Twin Flame or Divine Union readings was to do that and, a mirror, and mirror readings as well. But actually, how I feel about it right now, I think I just want to keep doing these these read this 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 connecting with your inner feminine inner masculine series um because i feel like that is what's most important right now you know you can't really come into this union internally without connecting with both sides right so what i think collectively what we really need to focus on right now is how to connect with these parts of ourselves, both masculine and feminine. I am going to say that I am super surprised about the uh, the numbers, okay? Because um, the amount of views that the feminine got is the feminine video got is like double that of the masculine, and I am super super surprised by that. I know me personally, I was really. I was actually motivated by the masculine energies to really get back into these types of readings. And while I was planning it out in my head, mapping it out, figuring out how I wanted to do it, when I wanted to do it, blah, 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 the schedule around it, blah, blah, blah. I was really excited to get into connecting with the masculine energies because I feel like that's what we all really need. Yes, we're all on, we're in the, the rise of the divine feminine, but it's really time to start healing and working with the masculine energies and bringing them together. And I just, as of right now, the inner, the connecting with your inner feminine reading has like 1200 views and the connecting with your inner masculine only has like about 700 views. So that's kind of interesting it's really it's really interesting to see that we're at the, the collectively here the audience is more interested in the feminine than they are the masculine and i am going to say that is a bit of a switch <laughs> from when i started my channel because when i started my channel i was doing um twin flame readings and at that at that time people were more interested in what was going on with the masculine than what's going on with the feminine and now it seems that the the collective has shifted its focus, which I think is really cool. Um, 
So anyway, I'm really excited to continue with that series. If you haven't seen it yet, please go check it out. Please don't hesitate to let me know how that resonates with you, if you really like it or not. And also, I am open and willing to provide those readings for personal readings. So if you would like a personal reading in terms of connecting with your inner masculine or inner feminine, please go ahead and email me. I would, I would really love to offer that as more of a service, okay? All right, kids, so let's get into, let's get into today's um, energy. So I have our pre-shuffle here, and it really does seem like what Spirit wants to communicate right now is the acknowledgement of the purging process that we're going through. Overall energy, we have the Page of Swords, who is looking off into the distance, and underneath that we have the Knight of Wands, all right? So what I'm, what I'm picking up with the Page of Swords and the Knight of Wands energy is um, seeking truth, seeking understanding. Um, the Knight of Wands is a good sign here because what it feels like is a re, a reignition or an ignition or an igniting of some sort of passion, some sort of desire to move forward is what I'm hearing. And that desire to move forward is tempered by the Page of Swords here. <coughs> Excuse me, the Page of Swords here, which does kind of seem like a very interesting thing to say. Um, it's kind of cool. It almost feels a little novel that <laughs> the Knight of Wands would be tempered by uh, the Page of Swords, but it's also tempered by the Knight of Pentacles, which we have here, okay? So here on the table, we have... Um, the Knight of Pentacles, the Three of Swords, and the Page of Pentacles, all right? So this Knight of Wands energy here, this is um, passion ignited, okay? It may be passion reignited. Um, you may be interested in some new hobbies, or you may be getting back into some hobbies um, that you may not have really vibed with for a while. Um, for example, part of what I'm going through right now is a deep excavation, okay? I have been, over the last, oh, it started over the summer where I started purging situations surrounding the individual that I was under the impression was my twin flame or is my twin flame, and then it progressed, then from there it jumped to the relationship with my ex-husband, and then now, so ever since then, we've slowly but surely been going further and further back, healing, clearing, cleansing, all kinds of stuff. Because of that, if you are resonating with that, some of you might be reconnecting with some passions or desires that you had in the past. How that's showing up in my life is I am starting to realize that I don't resonate or I don't vibe with all of these things that I, these ways that I identified myself with in the past, okay? Um, and now all of a sudden today, some of that seems to be shifting a little more, but where now actually I am kind of feeling a little bit of a draw towards certain things, but I'm not going to really put more, forth much effort to dive into those things because I understand, I recognize that at this current moment in time, I'm in a sort of deep excavation process. So I'm just allowing these feelings to come up and exploring them and moving through them. That could be what you guys are doing here, all right? Um, Knight of Pentacles, Three of Swords, Page of Pentacles. Ultimately, what's happening here is we're facing the heartbreak. All right, Three of Swords. We're facing all of the things, or many of the things, slowly but sh slowly but surely, systematically, methodically, piece by piece. We're going back and putting the pieces together, or facing the things that have hurt us in the past that we have refused to deal with, not allowed ourselves to deal with, not been able to deal with. Okay, and through that energy, we are starting a new reality. Page of Pentacles. It's like we're pushing our own reset button here. That's really excellent, guys. Deep excavation. Deep, deep excavation. Um, okay, so be patient with yourselves, all right? This Knight of Pentacles energy is very much a patient energy, all right? You need to be patient with yourselves. You need to do this step by step. 
you really need to take this as slow and methodically as possible. This is a very, very important, I, I mean, spirit can't stress this enough to me, okay, for my own process, but they can't also, they can't stress it enough through me for you, for everyone else. This is a very important process, guys. This is the actually the healing that we've all been asking for. The thing about it is we need to do this. We need to dive in. We need to be committed, okay? Page of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. These are very committed energies. We need to be committed to this. We need to be committed to however long it's going to take because it's important. What lies on the other side of this healing is the reality we've always wanted for ourselves. But what's standing in the way is all the heartburn, heart, heartburn, heartbreak and pain. Okay. Okay. Let's move forward. I have a little fruit fly friend. You guys can't see him or her, but I can see it. It's on the leaf of one of my flowers here. It's on this leaf right here on my plant. I call these flowers because I think they're so pretty, but they're plants. <laughs> this is a money plant and that my roommate gave me. My roommate gave me this plant. When did he give me this plant? He gave it to me, I want to say in like October and it's doing really well. And this is, this is Sheila, my aloe that I got from my, one of my best friends, Natalie. Um, on my birthday. But anyway, I have a little fruit fly friend that's hanging out. Um, hi, little friend. <laughs> and I noticed it while I was channeling here. And I was like, oh, that's cute. Hi, little guy. So he's going to hang out with us <laughs> while we do our daily reading today. All right, guys. Okay. One more shuffle. All right. Spirit says one more shuffle. And then we're gonna get into the rest of the reading for today, okay? Yeah, deep excavation is what I'm hearing. I think I might wanna title that, title the reading that today. We'll see what else comes out here. All right, kids, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Monday, September 9th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Three shuffles, okay. You guys might wanna look up the symbolism of the fruit fly. Um, I know, I believe, because I've looked it up in the past, and I believe it is the ability to make something, basically, the ability to make sustenance out of garbage, right? Um, longevity? No, not longevity. Not longevity. What's the word I'm looking for? Something surrounding survival. being able to survive somehow. Look that up, that might be, that might be relevant to your situation. Two, last shuffle here, guys, for our Monday, September 9th, 2019. All right. Oh, and for those of you that remember, there, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, but I mentioned how I've been connecting with the collective in a little bit of a different way. Um, and I mentioned how at one point I heard that we were connected to sector three and now we're connected to sector six. Someone mentioned in a comment that um, the Pleiadians are of the sixth dimension and that is absolutely who I'm connecting with right now. Um, and they want, me to, they want me to say this, that the Pleiadian energy is very strong here. Um, in helping us connect with our souls, in helping us guide us, in helping guide us, but also they're helping guide us in this cleansing and this healing. Absolutely, for sure. They wanted me to say that. So here we are. Welcome the Pleiadians. They're here energetically. Cheers to y'all. <laughs> Alrighty, kids. Let's see what we've got. Monday, September 9th, 2019. Best messages, please, spirit. What would you like to discuss with us today? That 
That's enough. Okay. Okay. We have the world on one side and on the other side. So here, look, we have the world in which it looks like we are actively crossing through this portal, this change, okay? This, this end of a cycle here. But keep in mind, and this is something that I said with this side of the card many times in the past, you cannot rush this. You don't want to rush this. I promise you guys, you don't want to rush this process. Because just like the Knight of Pentacles says, you don't want to have to go back and have to fix something or get to, get to a really good place then only to realize that you missed something in the past that's still bothering you, okay? You don't want to rush this process. Ace of Swords is on the other side of our of the deck here for our overall energy what this is saying to me is right now this is a period of understanding coming to a clear understanding of things the epiphany learning gaining the wisdom seeing clearly all of the things that may have hold you held you back the pain that you may have been harboring whatnot whatever we have the ten of cups the eight of swords we have the lovers the six of swords the emperor and the hierophant Let's start here. Ten of Cups, Eight of Swords, The Lovers. Okay. So, with The Lovers, we have this side of the card here where we don't have the angel, all right? The angel is on this side, okay? And in this case, I would see this as an energy of the universe bringing these two counterparts together, right? Here, we have the counterparts together, and they're looking off into the distance. What I'm seeing here, especially with this coupled with the Eight of Swords, and it's this side of the Eight of Swords in which we have, we see that the, 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 tie, the, the, the rope that is tying this woman is incredibly loose. Like it literally looks, excuse me, it literally looks like this rope is about to just slip right off of her. Your confines are not as bad as you think they are. And then you have this eagle. Fly like an eagle. Yes. Fly like that eagle, y'all. All right, this is freedom coming into play. And you have the 10 of cups. Now, yes, this seems like a dreamy scene. It seems like the 10 of, in which the, the 10 of cups here, it seems like it might be a pipe dream. It feels, it seems like it might be so far off into the distance, you can't quite grasp it yet. But yet, this is what we're moving towards, okay? We have this energy of divine union within, of the masculine and the feminine coming together, working in tandem to release themselves of these ties, of these chains of the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords absolutely could, would be conformity. We have the Hierophant here, okay? Um, gaining some sort of wisdom, gaining some sort of freedom, gaining some sort of insight to move towards your Ten of Cups, to be an embodiment of your own form version of the Ten of Cups. Yes, we have, on the other side, we have the Emperor, in which he's facing off into the distance. So to me, this seems, that I'm getting an energy of he is looking off into the distance. He's looking at his domain, seeing what it is, how he, how he wants to move forward, what he wants to create, what he needs to clear up. We have the Six of Swords, and we have the Hierophant, okay? The Hierophant, in this energy, what I'm feeling right now, the Hierophant, we could say, is playing a sort of devil's advocate. Man, does that sound like an oxymoron. <laughs> but that's the energy that I'm getting, all right? The Hierophant here represents conformity. It represents religion. It represents, yes, higher learning, higher teaching. Yes, of course, as it represents the government. It represents institution. It represents university. It represents school. It represents teaching and learning. It also represents conformity. It represents masks. It can even, in some cases, I'm hearing, and maybe this is just specific to this situation, but it can represent fear. Fear through dogma, okay? The, the, the type of fear that is spread with intentions of controlling others. What we have here is someone or the collective of us taking our power back with the emperor from this hierophant energy, whatever that may represent for you, and moving on, coming out of some sort of cave okay coming out of the darkness 
coming out of rough waters into calmer waters. What does that mean? Well, in this case, moving from, oh, our fruit fly friend, friend has gone. Anyway, in this case, moving from rough waters to calmer waters would be moving from elements of dogma and conformity to calmer waters or that which is more true and authentic to you. And that's why I'm saying the Hierophant here is playing the devil's advocate because the Hierophant energy has done its job successfully in teaching you through dogma, conformity, social norms, religion, university, blah, blah, blah. It taught you lessons there. It taught you the value of nonconformity, of being a nonconformist. It taught you the value of being an individual, that the emperor. The emperor represents Aries energy. Aries is the individual, is the first of the zodiac. This has taught you to be an individual. Oh shoot, looky here. As I was saying that, I was feeling guided to look underneath the world and we have the counterpart to the Hierophant, we have the High Priestess. And it's this side of the card in which we are now seeing behind the High Priestess, where normally, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna say that too. Normally it would be this side of the card in which she's, gui she's guarding, she's, 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 she's keeping secrets. Yes, which is natural to her, this is not a bad thing. Okay, maybe sometimes there are just some things that are not meant to be known. And yet what we have here is now we've gone past the veil, behind the veil. We have the keys of wisdom here. And thus, we get to live of our own accord. And thus, we have the chariot underneath that, moving forward of our own accord. Seeing, I'm hearing seeing things clearly and truthfully, understanding who it is that you are in this lifetime, what you have to offer, what you have to bring to this world. And it doesn't mean that you have to know exactly what that is. You may not even know what that is at all, but you might be in a period right now in which you're saying to yourself, okay, well, I can accept my individuality more. And if there is something that I have that's unique to bring to this world, I'm ready to start embracing that because I'm ready to leave the conformity behind and start to live from a more individual, individualistic place. That is absolutely beautiful, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Alrighty. So now, now let's get into our clarifications. And to clarify today, I'm going to be using the, gosh, the Wild Unknown Tarot. Um, I got this deck from a very dear friend of mine when she gave me a bunch of different decks, which includes the Gilded Reverie Lenormand deck and the um, Dreaming Way Tarot, of which I've been using for morning coffee. I used the, um, this deck for the feminine energies for the connecting with your inner feminine and today I'm feeling really called to work with it again I really like this deck um, so we're gonna get some clarity we're gonna start with the lovers the ten of cups and the eight of swords and what clarity I'm looking for right now what I'm feeling guided to bring to you guys in the form of clarity is what are these confines that we are breaking free from eight of swords let's get a little bit of clarity here what has been blocking us keeping us tied up keeping us away from what the ten of cups really means for us maybe we can get a little bit of well you know what i don't want to i don't want to define the ten of cups for you i want you to define that ten of cups for yourself that's the whole point. <laughs> that is literally the whole point of what we're going through right now, right? What I do want to define for you is what has been keeping you tied up and away from your version of the Ten of Cups. Last shuffle here. All right. Here we go, guys. Just some clarity here. Please, spirit. 
What has been confining us? Oh. Oh, well, I like that. I like that a lot. We have death. Major change. Major change. We have the Five of Cups. Okay. And what? And you know what's crazy? Well, it's not crazy. But what's interesting about this is this being the overall energy feels so poignant. The Five of Cups. It's... Guilt, shame, uh, the guilt and shame that comes from lack of worthiness. We have the Sun of Cups and the Five of Pentacles, the Five of Pentacles, lack of worthiness. Uh, literally, lack of worthiness, the Five of Cups. The Sun of Cups, I'm sorry, not the Five of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, with the Five of Cups, yes. The Sun of Cups, of which I believe is the Knight of Cups. Okay, so... Spirit keeps, I keep hearing conformity in my head. So, feeling, okay, so the situation here is, con that, that what has been holding us back is a... a, a feelings a, a a need or a desire to conform in some way that made us feel like we were not worthy of getting what it is we truly wanted by being who we truly are the lovers being that balance of masculine and feminine energy that you truly are in your own individual way what we have been dealing with are feelings of well, that's just not good enough. I need to show up in this way. I need to show up in that way. I need to have X, Y, and Z in my life. I need to have this amount of money in my bank account. I need to have this type of job, this type of career, this type of education. I need to have lived my life in this certain way. I need to follow this certain timeline. And if you don't line up with that, then you're not good enough. You're not good enough for me. You're not good enough for anyone else. You're not good enough because you do not meet the social standards. Well, that is changing. Death and the Son of Cups, which is the, I believe is the Knight of Cups. And to me, the Knight of Cups is an individual when they're balanced and when they're healthy, when they're harmonious. They're an individual that is completely accepting of themselves and of others and is not afraid to be vulnerable in the right time and the right place and is not afraid to live their authentic life, is not afraid to live with their heart on their sleeve, is not afraid to live with their emotions guiding them. Love guiding them. Truth, honesty, integrity guiding them. This is also, this, this sun or knight of cups energy is a stepping stone towards the king and queen energy. So with this transformation between death and the knight of cups or the son of cups here, um, it's like we're learning to be our authentic selves. We're learning to be truthful. We're learning to be honest. We're learning to honor our hearts looking at ourselves and recognizing that we are in fact good enough. We are in fact good enough, just as the universe made us. Not the way the Hierophant or these social norms or blah, blah, whatnot, whatever, want us to show up, but the way that we naturally, organically, and individually show up. I love that. I really love that, you guys. Um, Okay, so now can we clarify this? What's to clarify about this? I'm just curious as to what, I don't really have a specific direction here for this Emperor, the Hierophant, and the Six of Swords. I feel like we've spoken a lot about it already. Um, I'm just interested in seeing what Spirit has to say about it. The Hanged Man, oh my god. <laughs> with something else underneath it. Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Underneath the deck, we have the Four of Swords. Okay. 
Um, and so we have, we, <laughs> this is awesome. We have two depictions of this hanged man energy, this change in perspective. Let's see, four of pentacles, okay. And the two of cups, which has come out and fallen in reverse here. But we have two, because I do see the Four of Swords as a minor arcana version of the Hanged Man, which we, in fact, do have here. Okay? Um, so this is definitely, and especially with how it's depicted here, you, you have a lamb on this deck, but then th the third eye of that lamb is illuminated. This is all about a change in perspective. Now, I guess this is advice. What's this? The Seven of Swords, okay. Um, yeah, the Seven of Swords actually is pretty poignant here. Um, but what I'm getting with this energy right now, you guys, is, is change in perspective. And it's so funny because the Hierophant here has these two figures here who look like they're being, basically they're being indoctrinated, right? On the Hanged Man card of this, this is the vice versa deck. On the Hanged Man card, one side of the card is a depiction of these two same individuals from this Hierophant card now standing in front of the hanged man, recognizing that there is more to the truth of existence than the dogma that the establishment puts forth. That's, it, it, it's in the hanged man energy of this deck, this vice versa deck, that these two individuals that had spent so much time be, and effort being indoctrinated are now faced with the expansive view, the, the, the fact that there's more truth out there. There's more, there are different points of view. They are faced with the ability to now start thinking for themselves. And we have none other than the hanged man here in the clarifier. Okay, so you can say that in this time where we were working on being a conformist in ways, however that resonates for you, we actually were in a stuck, stagnant state. Freedom is the key here, but we had to learn what freedom really truly meant for us. We had to come out of this energy here with the four of pentacles of being blocked of holding on, of needing some sort of conformist or structure to feel safe. Two of Cups, the Two of Cups is in reverse though. <clears throat> I just heard reverse transcript days, um, which I believe is a process of um, rewriting or um, separating one's DNA, I believe. I've been doing some research of my own um, lately. Uh, and what I'm getting, I, what I'm getting with this Two of Cups in reverse is we are, yeah, wow, thank you, Spirit. Reverse transcript ace is right because we are rewriting the bond between masculine and feminine. We're rewriting the code, redefining who we are and defining it in more truth. I want to get a little bit of more clarity with this and I'm gonna use the Lenormand deck. I, and this is specifically for the Two of Cups. We are rewriting who we are told we had to show up and this absolutely can mean gender norms. This absolutely is this renaissance, I guess you can say, in terms of masculine and feminine energy, coming to the understanding that we all have masculine and feminine energy within, and we do fall somewhere on the spectrum of being more dominantly masculine or more dominantly feminine in energy, just as a natural way of being, but then we also have the counterpart within. and redefining that relationship, redefining ourselves through those eyes instead of the eyes of some sort of gender normality. Oof. Yes. Okay, so let's talk. I just want to talk a little more about this Two of Cups here. 
which is in reverse. Okay. So, Spirit, what can you tell us about this Two of Cups energy in reverse? This rewriting of this relationship within. Redefining of who we are through the eyes of God. Ooh, is what I just heard. That was definitely a direct channel. Rewriting who we are. Seen through the eyes of God, not through the eyes of man. I'm staring right at this Hierophant energy as I'm saying all this. So can you tell us a little bit more about this Two of Cups, please, Spirit? What is it you want to know? Um, I don't know. What can you tell us? Well, we can tell you anything. You have to define it better. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you want us to know? That's better. Okay. What do you want us to know about this Two of Cups energy? Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. Did you see all of that just like fly out? Well, there you go. You redefine the question. Okay, great. Yes. Overall energy, you have card number 17, the storks. Okay. This is family. I'm definitely seeing this as a connection. Now, the storks can mean, um, you know, having children. What I'm seeing in this energetically is the masculine and feminine coming together in a more healthy and balanced way, allowing you to give birth to, 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 um, what is the word? Um, oh shoot. Um, what is the word when you, basically when you, um, you know, you have sex and you, 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 you make a child like you. What is the oh God? I know you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's the incept. Is it conception? There it is. The moment of conception, like you come together and you conceive of a child. Right. This doesn't have to be a physical child. It can be. But what I'm getting, this is more of an uh, energetic thing, an energetic baby. And you could it could be seen as your new life. Card number 17 in the traditional tarot. That's the star. And that's healing. Okay, you have card number 38, which is an, boils down to an 11, and thus bridges, bridging the gap, bridging the gap between the two, healing the rift between masculine and feminine. You have card number 27, the letter, card number 8, which I do believe represents death, uh, card number 4, the home, happy family life, okay, stability, card number 44 did f fall out in reverse. Uh, the magnifying glass. Hmm. Let's look into the book. We're going to start with 44 because that is in reverse. Yeah, magnifying glass. I am the card that suggests you take a suggests to you to take a closer look or two. If you did not get clarity from an earlier view, I can provide more focus and a perspective that is new. This card suggests that you need to take a look, closer look at a current issue. Now is the time to focus, scrutinize, and analyze. You might be overlooking something that isn't apparent or even visible. The smallest details may be vitally important. Use this magnifying glass to help you investigate and uncover more information that could lead to greater clarity. In a reading, the card to the left is what seems to, needs to be taken a closer look at. Okay. Um, now it did come out with 27. Be careful. Okay. This card can also be a warning that it is not, that all is not what it seems at first be careful to read the fine print if this card appears with the letter card number 27 okay uh book or the ring it may mean you have to examine a document contract information or commitment more carefully that makes perfect sense because as i was reading this before i even got to that part i was seeing that this card here even though it is in reverse it's not a bad thing that it's in reverse it's actually a pretty good thing because it just means that we're going through the process of redefining something we're trying to understand we're getting more clarity we're looking at things a little clearer but for some of you you really need to look at some things a little clearer there is some dogma there is some um There are some things that you need to look at in your life. And it's these things that you are providing some sort of blind faith to. For some of you, this being in reverse is absolutely you refusing to look at it. 
but it also could represent the fact that in your past you have refused to look at it you just blindly went forward with it and it feels like some sort of some form of conformity absolutely this hierophant energy here okay there i mean there are some there are some contracts there is some knowledge there is some dogma there are some scriptures there's something that needs to be re redefined re-looked at reworked even seen with a more of a scrutinizing eye look at the words maybe and then look at the actions of the people that put forth those words do they line up because actions do speak louder than words you guys okay you have death number eight transformation you have number four which is the home stability family life i'm also seeing this as your own personal dom domain here with the house okay yeah i am your family your base your ground and your home i give you stability and comfort i am your living arrangement and environment i am what surrounds you and your estate this the cards around me give you signs on my present state or what the future will dictate now i'm really seeing the house or here this card as your internal home your internal abode The home that you reside in, the one that you can go to when you are leaving the world behind you, leaving the physical behind you, yes? Your inner sense of stability, peace, um, foundation, yes? And then, okay, we have, this is called the coffin, but it is definitely death. I am the painful change and transition. You will feel me through your body, your mind, and certainly your wallet. Depression, loss, and bankruptcy are my specialties. I am sickness and bed rest. I am all endings and sometimes death. But I am definitely seeing this as the death, the change, the transformation that you are going through here. Okay. Okay, look, listen here. The coffin of the reverie deck harks back to the ancient Egyptian period. Although traditionally seen as an ending or finality, uh, finality, sorry, excuse me, this is also symbolic of an initiation that brings a final reckoning of our life purpose. It is often when we are faced with life-changing events or illness that we evaluate the important aspects of our lives, of our life. The significance of this card can be the actual ending of something as we know it. I mean, the cards don't lie, guys. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get our closing oracle guidance now from the Crystal Mandala deck. Last shuffle here. Okay. Oracle guidance, please. Closing message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading for today for September 9th. Ah. Closing message. There it is. Yes. Literally exactly what we've been talking about today. Card number 16. Archangel Balthiel. And Rose Quartz, Heart Healing. You might want to, this actually would be a really good time to work on, to, to work with Rose Quartz. Okay? To get you, to help you through this process. Card number 16. <clears throat> we bring you the gift of Heart Healing. Over many lifetimes, oh, sorry, hold on a second, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Over many lifetimes, your beautiful heart has loved and lost and loved again. You have learned how to feel joy, pain, suffering, and bliss. Your wise heart knows that life is filled with darkness and light, and it chooses to love the divine and participate in life anyway. You might worry that your heart has been stretched beyond its limit, become closed or broken, 
yet your heart is filled with divine grace, power, and, of course, love. It can and will heal itself to love again, bigger, bolder, and braver than ever before. Do not doubt the healing power of your heart. There is power in your heart to heal through struggle into joy, and your heart has the gift of helping to heal others with love. Your open, kind heart helps soothe others, bringing comfort and reassurance to the world. Trust your heart and let it heal and guide you into the most beautiful and loving divine destiny waiting for you. So beautiful, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!